so what do you think would, uh, like, what would have to happen to get hyperbarics into a situation where it becomes like part of the common conversation where now it's like, Hey, you know, you're going to go do this, but before, you know, Hey, you're going to need this surgery, Mm -hmm. but beforehand we're going to do hyperbarics. Like what's going to get that onto the more onto the public scale. So we are, we are working with, for instance, uh, surgeons right now. I'm, I got a couple of surgeons that are in the referral process to us that see 40% faster healing and a 30% reduction in infection. So if you, if you do hyperbarics with me prior to, you pre-oxygenate the skin and then you cut into the skin, it has all those co- extra collagen production that's there, the extra stem cells that are there, the extra boost, boost on the immune system, the, you know, the antitoxins, so forth. Uh, all of that is in play as you're doing it and then you do the surgery and and then you follow up more, 30% reduction. That, to me, if I was a numbers guy and I was drawing infections, I'd go, shit, if I can reduce the prospect of infection on the backside of it, I would do it from an insurance perspective. So I think that money drives the world. So I think if we were going to make things mainstream, it would be that somebody makes that money case to the insurance agencies. And what I'm trying to do right now is knock on the HMO's door and go, guess what? I think I can help your people and, you know, for less price and, and drive down the fees that they're going to have long term. But the problem is you need 10,000 studies and, you know, a million people go through your thing before somebody will go, maybe we should try that. Hmm. Are there other centers that are um, as technologically probably proficient as yours? No, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure there are. Uh, we, we we just set up this center and, and I just do it to feed my habit, right? So my habit is research, right? I'm sure. like, hey, what are you addicted to? Yeah, research, just give it straight to me and I'll be able to do it. But it, all this does is funnel money in for my research stuff. But a normal center, you can just, you could start a center. You can get sure. certified. You could just have your own center and you could be the guy. Well, now, how much do you know? Uh, it depends on you, man. You there's seem a, to know a lot. But. There's, a re, there, there's a center here in Austin and I went and checked it out. Um, you know, Parsi was talking to me about, um, you know, here, here's the time, the atmospheres and kind of went through your protocol. Yep. And so uh, as I reached out and so I, I just did some ancillary research on some places in the area. And uh, as I was kind of looking at like the difference in the machines and the protocols, I'm like, man, there's no standardization in this. Yeah. How, do, how do I know that nope. they can replicate Joe's nope. protocol? Exactly. So, you know, I used to date that girl that was here in Austin, Texas, and, uh, yeah. and yeah. she was going to hyperbarics. And she's like, oh, yeah, I take my computer in there all the time. And I just go into my street clothes. And I'm like, oh, you're killing me because bad things are going to happen in there. And, you know, so, th- so there's a couple of places that it's just not going to work to bring a computer in or a uh, phone. Why? So what happened? Yeah. Well, so if you look at these phones that we're carrying around, there's so much energy density in that phone that when we took it out and shot it, cause we had guys carrying their cell phones into, into fights, into firefights. And we're like, look, don't carry your cell phone into a firefight. They're like, why? I'm like, cause if that pierces and that battery carries away, you're going to burn your skin with an arc that's hot enough to well, for crying out loud. So there's a lot of energy density in there, and it's not made to be pressurized. It's not a lot of pressure, but another 15 pounds per square inch or another 30 pounds per square inch, depending on what table you're on. Oh, my God, these things have detonated and squeezed. Why do you think they tell you if you drop your airplane, if you drop your phone on the airplane under the seat, don't move your seat to go look for it because you might break it? Well, that's because if you break that thing wide open on an airplane, you have an uninterruptible cascade of energy that's just going to freaking blow up and mix that with oxygen. Yeah, there was a line of phones, Samsung, a while back that were blowing up, burning in flight. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, one of the notes that they Lots had to cancel. Lots of energy density, and think think about how much energy density is in that com- that laptop that you have there. If that is huge, that's got to be even more. And it's like, holy! Ma- Everybody wants the device to last all day, all week, or whatever, without having to charge it. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> but you don't take these things inside hyperbaric chambers because oxygen and other things that you weren't born with do not mix well together. So when she was talking about that and talking about that center, I was like, listen, either you got to distance yourself from them or if they have a catastrophic fire or an event, he, 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 they're going to just make all of us look stupid because the oxygen bar in the mall is the same thing as the moderate or mild hyperbaric oxygen that the person has in their backyard with the dog climbing in it is the same thing as my center is the same thing as the hyperbaric center that's in the hospital. Why? One of them blows up. We all look stupid. So, sure. uh-huh. you know, you, you, you're guilty by association. So it's, it's like, kind of like guns like that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That gun that went off and shot those three people, whatever. Yeah. No, <laughs> don't even to, get me We started. have to ban all them. Yeah. There we go. <laughs>